where you are, lift up your hands towards heaven. Let's go ahead and bless the name of our maker. Let's go ahead and bless the name of our maker. Let's go ahead and bless the name of our maker. Father, we worship your holy name. Father, we bless you. We we'll thank you for the progress you made in this year so far. We we'll thank you for the righteous sun and heavens. We we'll thank you for your goodness. We we'll thank you for your mercy. Praise, praise, praise. This is our story. We we'll thank you for showing us your goodness and kindness. We we'll lift up the name of God. 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 We'll Father, we worship you. This is the last Sunday of the month of October. We are grateful. Grateful for your kindness. Grateful for your mercy. Grateful for your love. What a mighty God you are. Even time that when we were not faithful, you were faithful. Even time when we were inconsistent, you showed us mercy. We we'll thank you for grace. We we'll thank you for grace. We we'll thank you for grace. This is our story, oh God. We we'll thank you for what you've done. We are the people that you have helped. We are the people that we have shown mercy. We we'll return to give you all the praise. We we'll return to give you all the glory. Because our God is good. Because our God is kind. Because our God is mighty. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah! Somebody shout hallelujah! Oh God! For the progress we have made so far this year, we're grateful. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the gifts. Of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for apostolic signs and wonders. We've seen parent women have children. We've seen marital set back cancelled. You have been healing emotions, healing emotions. You've been healing emotions, reuniting family, reuniting homes, delivering people. Oh God, I give you praise. We honor your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, before you have your seat, before you have your seat, I, I don't know where you, whether you came to praise God today, but we did. There's a praise in the house that we must release today. Before you have your seat, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, everyone. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Tell your neighbor, excuse me if you think I'm not polite. Have you excuse me if you think I'm not civilized? When it comes to my God, I do it all wrong. Somebody, anybody, shout yes, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. God, see what He's done for me. You are the living God. Oh, no one like you. can have your sins. Praise God. Hallelujah. Have this service blessed you? Yes. Amen. Amen. YP, in the words of Phenom, YP. You know. Yeah, praise God. All right. So we're going to get into the word of God today. So this month is the month we teach about relationship and marriage. And this month, um, wow. First of all, you, you need to share your stories. You need, if this has blessed you, send me a video. Send me something on Instagram, on Facebook, and let me know if this has blessed you. The messages, all the messages are available on YouTube at Harvest's TV. You can easily share to all of your friends at that area. All right. So today we're going to talk about overcoming tough seasons in relationships and marriages. We're going to talk about over to overcoming tough seasons in relationship 
and marriages. Overcoming tough seasons in relationships and marriages. Let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 8. Before I do that, let's read. Okay, I'll do that later. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. Overcoming tough seasons in relationship and marriages. One of the things they never told me when I was a green Christian was that a Christian will have tough seasons in relationship. I thought once you were born again and you spoke in tongues, you will never have a tough season. You know, but God never says you don't have a tough season. God only promised you that you will overcome the tough seasons. Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. The Bible says, And while the earth remains, seed time, watch this now, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Clearly in the scripture, God defines that seasons, that there would always be seasons. There would always, always be seasons. That's what the Bible talks about. That there would always be seasons. He said summer and winter, cold. And, and, and the reason I'm saying so is that the same thing in the marriage and relationship, there would always be seasons. There would always, see, see, there would always be seasons in relationship and marriage. What am by season? For example, you know, many of you understand that during summer, during summer, you know, when it's proper summer in a lot of cold regions, everybody's out, everybody's wearing shorts. If summer is a bubbly period. It's a very bubbly period. So there's summer picnic, people are doing beach parties, people are outside because it's summer. Summer is the phase of life where everything is exciting. It's summer. Summer is exciting. During summer, people travel, everybody goes everywhere. But it now comes winter. And during winter, winter is a season where it's very cold. So people go back home early, they adjust the clock. Do you know even some countries adjust the clock when it's winter? For example, in the UK today, the clock will go back one hour behind. So you're going to wake up today in the UK and be like, oh, it's one hour behind. Because in, in winter, it gets dark very early and it gets, you know, the, it, it just gets dark early. But in winter, it's very cold. It's winter, it's very cold. Then, then, if, if, you, if you live in Nigeria or you live in West Africa, there's something that's peculiar to us. It's called Hamatan. In, in Hamatan, it, it gets really cold and gets really dry. And in Hamatan, you find your lips cracking. You find your skin very dry because of the season. Do you know relationship also goes through season? There's a season in your relationship where you guys just met yourself and it's summer season. And it's summer season, you, you, you will call up to, you will call up to, you dropped at home at 10 p.m. You go back to your house at 11 p.m. And as you picked up the phone, you're calling her again at 11.30. And you guys talk to 3.30 a.m. And you're like, baby, I need to sleep. He said, no, no, I, I cannot use sleep right now because I can't sleep without you. And it's so, everything is nice. Every, every, everything is nice. When, when you're married in the summer season, you have sex every day, Monday to Sunday. Like, oh, you, you know, you know, that's what you do. It's summer season. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's, it gets to Hamilton. Hamilton is a season where everything is dry, and the calls you used to get, you stop getting, and the flowers you used to get, you stop getting. And, and the reason I'm saying so is that you must know that sometimes. It's just that you're going through different seasons in the relationship. And the thing about seasons is this. We all dress for the season so that we can what? Manage the season. Let me show you what I mean. Give me, give, give me. So, so, so when, it, when it's, oh, thank you. God bless you. So when it's winter time. When it's winter time, I have what? My winter jacket. Because I expect it to be cold. When, when it's winter time in your relationship, your partner can become harsh and it's not because they want to it can just be winter time and you get a jacket what attitude do you have to put on in the winter season of your marriage what attitude do you have to put on in the winter season of what of your relationship because if you don't put on the right attitude the cold the cold of the winter is going to get into you but you you, you but, but if you understand that it's a winter season then what do you do you, you just you just say oh i need my jacket on i need my jacket on i need to be more graceful because i understand that this is winter season the challenge is this the challenge is this people are in winter but they leave as though they're in summer so it's really cold time in their relationship but they're leaving as if it's summer. 
And, and some people, it's not as if they leave as if it's summer. They are comparing that relationship. They say, oh, okay, but see what your brother is doing. But see what your friend is doing. But we can be friends but not be in the same relationship or marital season. And, and when it's winter season your marriage you need to get your jacket the question is that, do you even know the season you are in in your marriage because everybody needs to get a jacket when it's winter season and, and sometimes it's not winter season sometimes sometimes what it is winter season winter season it's so cold so you put on your jacket but sometimes it's not just cold it begins to rain big time and, and you, you need you need an umbrella and, and sometimes you, you need an umbrella to save you from the from, from the pressure that comes because it's raining it's raining cat and dog it's raining cat and dog see there the, 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 sometimes you just have to defend yourself because it's raining season what does raining season look like in a relationship where it seems as if everything is coming for you and if you're not careful <laughs> you talk you can't talk well you cook you can't cook well you're great you can't great well Everything just seems to be falling apart. And if you're not careful, you need an umbrella. And say, because I know it's raining season right now. I need an umbrella to protect me. The challenge is that most people don't know the season they are in. So they are not properly prepared to handle the season that they are in. And, and you know, and, and this is so bad. Because some people, you're in Hamilton season. And number 10 season, all you need, you don't even need an umbrella. All you need is just more grease. Because things will start cracking. Things will what? Start cracking. You need more, there'll be more dust. So you have to clean some more. You have to clean some more. There'll be more dust. So the question is that, how many of you understand what I'm talking about right now? How many of you have understand? Relationship is not just on the high, on the high, on the high, on the high. It has its own seasons. But, but, the, but the challenge with seasons is this. The challenge with seasons, because every season has a baggage. Can you give me my, my box? You know, because every season has, every season has issues. My, my box and all of the things and, and the petrol. Every season has issues. So this is my issue. This is fire. Every season comes to its own fire. This is fire right in my season. And as there is fire, this is petrol. And this is what? Fire extinguisher. And sometimes when a season brings fire, Instead of us to look at the fire of the season and get the integration and put out the fire, you know what we do sometimes? We go for petrol and begin to pour petrol. How do you pour petrol? So you are in a season. We'll pour petrol in the Bible. I'll give an example of someone. There's a woman that their season was a season of health challenge. And who is this person? The name is Job. And he had the wife. And instead of the wife to come and say, Job, we're going through a tough time in our marriage. We've lost our children. And put what? And put execution. You know what Job's wife did? Job's wife took petrol. He says, you're a useless man. You're a sinner. He said, curse God and die. He said, curse God and die. You know, wh when there's a season, do you put petrol or you put fire? Will you put petrol or you put the fire in Sigusha? Someone says, oh, I, I, I always try to put it in Sigusha. The way you know if you're putting it in Sigusha is this. Am I making it better or worse? Are you here? Are you here? Yes, because there have been there have different seasons. The types of things that things that happen in different seasons. Number one, there's intense, so there's seasons of what? The seasons of financial challenges. Seasons of financial challenges. What 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 the man or the woman is not just as buoyant as it used to be. And when when there's no money, and now he he, he could pay the bills very well. He could, he could celebrate Valentine with style and glamour. He could, on your birthday, do so much for you. But now he's able to do so much for you. Do you come back and say, oh my God. Do you amplify it by putting petrol? Or you come and say, let's look for a fire execution. How many people have lost their relationship? Or dented the trust in their marriage? Because there was financial pressure and they could not handle it. And some people, it's, 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 it's so, so financial challenge can be a type of season. The second type of season is this. The, the type of, th thank you, the two of you. The second type of season is this. It, it can be a season of health challenges. Where, where, like Job had health challenges. There are marriages that crumbled because someone had a health challenge. And instead of them to get behind the problem, they begin to fight one another.
And there are seasons where there are no health challenges. There are just delays. Delays can be delays can be the fact that I can have a child. You have a child with delay. Delay can be the fact that we are trying to migrate, so the husband left first. For three or four years, you've not been able to come together. There's been delay. You know, in the Bible, the Bible speaks of a woman called Hannah that we respect her faith a lot. But Anna messed up one area. You know why? Because when she was waiting for her baby, when she was waiting for her baby, you know what she did? You know, Pastor George, come quickly. Come, come, Pastor George. When she was waiting for her baby, her husband's name was called Elkanai. Elkanai. When she was waiting for her baby and I was delayed, you know what Anna did one day? Anna got up and went and said, Elkanai, give me children. Give me children. Oh, I'll die. Give me children. Oh, I'll die. And, and I don't know why Anna was doing that, but what she was doing was this. She was putting petrol on what? On the fire. Maybe to her, she didn't realize what she was doing, but she was saying, She said, You will kill me today. You will kill me. You, you, you. And she was putting. The question is this Do you know the season you are in? And when there's a fire in your season, do you put petrol? Or you use the institution? Your mouth can be petrol, your mouth can become an institution. What do you use your mouth for? So, Anna, Anna, give, give me children. But that didn't work. Then she got some sense and says, if I hold him to tomorrow, it doesn't matter what I have a child. Let me go to the one that is a creator. And she went into the temple. And all of a sudden she went to, because she engaged prayer. Because prayer can quench what? Can quench fire. <laughs> That's why when some people say they know how to do slay mama but can't pray, they will be slayed. they will be slayed because there are some things that happen in life you must know wars are first fought on the knees wars are first fought on the knees we control the spirit from the knees remember many of you are busy fighting Elkanah meanwhile your battle is somewhere else thank you sir how many types of seasons have I given you right now? I've told you about seasons of financial challenges, of what? Health challenges, of delay. There are seasons of intense pressure, misunderstanding, and stress. And, and, and when I finished the other service, one young lady walked up to me and said, Pastor, thank you for sharing this. I, I wish I knew this earlier. I, I said, why? He said, because my relationship of eight years ago just broke up some months ago. I said, what happened? He said, Pastor, to be sincere, it was just a season of intense pressure and stress and we didn't handle it well. And, and, I, and I don't know why. Sometimes it's the fact that there's stress at home people bring. Stress in the office people bring home. Stress that people bring home. And, and the question is the fact that what do you do during those seasons? Do you, do you bring, do you use petrol? Or you use a fire execution. And there are seasons, they're not just so the Bible's talking about summer and winter and spring and autumn and fall and hammer time. They're just not seasons like that. They're also seasons of change and growth. What season of change and growth? Do you know something? You know, I always used to think, wow, how did Vasti have the audacity to tell the king I'm not coming? You know, the, the thing that came to my mind was this maybe. They dated as young people and they married as young people and they were like childhood lovers and they were like friends and she didn't realize that this guy is not just my friend now he's a powerful man as a king so one day he said i'm not coming and maybe she had always said i'm not coming and there was no repercussion but the problem was that this time she said i was not coming and the other royalty was there and she doesn't realize that the person i married has changed and sometimes change is good but change can put pressure on your marriage Ask those that have children. When there was no child, it was me and my husband. But as soon as two, three kids came along, they couldn't balance between them. You know, some men are very successful when they were, they were very close to their partner when there was no money. But now there's no money. They are traveling here, traveling there, they're traveling there, they're traveling here. And, and changes come. And, and, and the question is, that, do you know the season you were in in your relationship, all of you that dating? And do you know the season you are in your marriage? And do you identify the tensions and the possible fires in that season? And what you need to ask yourself is that, am I using petrol or am I using what? Estigusia. The reason why is that, so I said, how do I know if I'm using petrol or estigusia? This is what you will see. If you use petrol, the fire will be inflamed. 
If what you're doing is causing explosion, you're using petrol. If what you're doing is quenching the fire, you're using an Gusha. I'm saying so because this is the reason I'm saying so. If you do not deal with the seasons, the season can destroy your marriage. Ask Lot's wife. Lot's wife was in the season of two things. Season of financial loss and season of change. And as Lot got his wife to leave, you know what happened? The Bible says this, that Lot's wife was stuck and she looked back and became a pillow of salt. And because she could not deal with a season of change, she became what? A pillar of salt and eventually lost her life. Do you know the season can take your life if you're not careful? Not only can it take your life, if you're not careful with the season, the season can break you emotionally because you don't know how to handle the season. There are people that go through a season, they eventually come out of the season, but they are different because the season broke them. It broke them. It broke their self-esteem. It broke their relationship. It broke their confidence. It broke a lot of things. They came out of it. But they were not the same. But the reason why is that they did not understand the season that they were in. And why is it important for you to understand the season you were in? Because the season can affect your children. There are things that happen in the house for two years that put a permanent scar on children. What is what I'm talking about? They're like, but that just happened for one year but that was a permanent scar I know someone that told me he said that it was just one year they said I should go and live with somebody and that's how my life got ruined seasons glory to God when terrible seasons come that's what the Bible says they will come see what the Bible says Matthew chapter 7 the Bible says the house that is built on the rock the rain fell he said the one that is built on the sand the rain fell no matter what you build your house upon, the rain will what? Fall. You pray, the rain will fall. You don't pray, the rain will fall. The difference is this, the one that prays has the umbrella. That's the difference. So, I'm not saying this prayer will stop the season, but prayer will manage the season. See what the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13. And after I read this verse, I'm going to ask for four, three people to share the seasons that they've experienced, either the experience or the experience, and how they have transitioned or what are the fire in that season. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. Are you getting blessed today? Yes. Oh, that's so weak. Are you getting blessed today? Yes. Can I hear you say a big yes? yes? Say, this is my time. I will not be denied. That's so weak. Say, this is my time. I will not be denied. That's it. Look at what the Bible says here. This is very powerful. Ephesians 6 13. It says, Wherefore stick unto the whole armor of God that ye may what? Ye may be able to withstand what? Did he say you will stop it? No. He says, The evil day will come, but this armor will help you stand in the evil day. So, is it that your, your marriage, your marriage will go through a process, a season? But this armor will keep your marriage strong. There's also a last season of spiritual attacks. That for no reason, things just begin to mess up with your relationship and mess up with your marriage. But the confidence we have is this. It says, put on the whole armor of God in which you'll be able to withstand all the attacks of the enemy. Glory to God. So we see that seasons will come, but there's a promise that will stand despite every season. Let me get four people that are going to share with me their stories about the different seasons they are in and we'll move to how we're going to manage it, how we manage the seasons. Seasons you've experienced in your relationships. Some of you have great experiences in your marriage. Seasons like that. Okay, hands up please in Jesus' name. Wait, right up. Yeah, let's go. This is the way it goes. We need the first one to volunteer then everybody start talking about the first person. You know. So who's the first person? Yeah. This is a season I've been through. I've been through this season. This is a season I'm going through right now. Pastor Lele, yeah, yeah, thank you, sir. All right. So I had a season of um, dryness in communication with my wife. And fortunately for us, COVID came. I remember during COVID, everybody was locked up. We were all at home. We couldn't go anywhere. 
And for me, that was an important season because I didn't realize how much my wife and I had gone apart. We were not, we were not talking. We were, just, we were just there. We were just existing as husband and wife. But during COVID, I was forced you know, to have those difficult conversations. And after that, it's, the seasons changed. Did you notice something? The change came when he had what difficult conversations. But he went through an Amatan season. But you know what? The reason why he could have it was that in those seasons, why did you did you give a lot of grace? Was there a lot of grace? Oh, there was. The reason why is that when there's Hamatan, there's a lot of oil. Oil is grace, reduces friction. When you're going through a cold time in your season, give a lot of grace. Because you know what you're feeling, the pain you're feeling, but you do not know what the other person is feeling. Think the best of them. Glory to God. Can I get some more? Can I get some more? Praise God. This is so. Let, let's appreciate. Yeah. Let, let's appreciate. Yeah. So, so maybe, maybe you are dating and you went through a season in your dating, and maybe maybe you had to break up at some point. Maybe you were married and you went through a season and you overcame it at some point. You know that kind of thing. I, I want to learn because there are powerful stories that we can learn from one another in this room. So just raise up your hands if you have a story to share. Raise up your hands. Thank you. Have you seen somebody? Thank you, thank you, at the, at, at the far back. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Yeah. All of you that are not sharing your seasons, I, I love you, you love to hear someone's story, you don't want to hear your stone story. God is seeing you in 3D. Glory to share, but yeah. I have a question to ask. Okay. Right, now you mentioned there are various seasons, right? Yes, sir. So at what point... Do you walk away if the summer season never comes back? You never spoke about that, so that, I want to know. That's good. I will take you after my comments. Yeah, just remind me, Swanson. I'm going to speak about that. There's a difference between season and patterns. Season always has a start day and a finish date. We know rainy season is between sometime and sometime. There's no Amatan is not ten years. Amen. Yes. Amatan is not two years. Amen. Yes. So seasons have definite periods so you will notice oh this started at this point not that since i've known you that is not a season that is a person praise god someone raised up the hand over here yeah yeah thank you, you want to share about the season yeah thank you and, and you also have a summit to share yeah I mean, let me just give a story. I'm not sure if she wants to share it. She's actually not calling if I share it. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a girl I know in church, and I saw her some days ago. I'm like, hey, how is your sweetheart? Because they're going to be married. So we're broken up. I said, what? He said, I got a job, and I had to leave apart for, for six months. And that was the end of our relationship. He said, even my car and my property I left to him, I can't find them. I just came back, and they had moved abroad because there was a season of separation and that could not be well managed see what I'm saying is this because you say wow every season has its fire but how do you deal with it with petrol or with what so your partner is away for you for six months and you'll be like oh god why are you staying away and you know you're staying for economic reason for the two of you you don't really I understand you feel the need to ask why you did but you make him feel the pain I would rather begin to do something that says how can I come and spend three days with you because the extinguisher is how to kill the fire not things that amplify the fire yes who wants to share here okay good morning um my story is um, how a relationship ended because we we're not mature enough to handle the season. Okay. So I was back in school, three-year relationship. It was literally perfect. Like security, emotion, especially emotional security was there. But the last year, final year, um, academic pressure began to settle in. And we both didn't know how to handle it properly. And I opted out because I felt I was applying the extinguisher, right? But the response I was getting was more petrol from the other person. But, but now I look back, I feel like if I had the maturity I have right now, I would have handled it better and it wouldn't have ended. That's what I'm saying. That, that, that sometimes you need to watch it. Because that's why a lot of people are single. Not because they don't have great relationships. But when the season changed, they could not handle what they had. 
and they lost it. Looking back, what, what would I have done differently, my sister? So tell me some of the pressures you had when you were young, yeah, in that today. Some of the pressures, some of the clashes you had. Um, I would try to give more grace, but the response was give just me something more practical. Harshness. Something practical. I know it's a long time, but you know. Um, okay, the relationship was so perfect that I could recall only one time he raised his voice at me in three years. Okay, that so you the just first... had an argument. Oh, wow. Yes. So, so, so during this intense period, yeah, what... what... Um, I responded with mildness. When I go back to my room, I just can't get over the shock. Like, I was overwhelmed. Like, you raised your voice at me. Oh, my God. Ah, you've changed. You're now a monster. I couldn't handle it. I think I was too sensitive. Oh. Right, so I, 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 and what did you add? <laughs> <laughs> How many gallons did you add? Like, 10 gallons, right? <laughs> I, I'm happy you lost the relationship, but you didn't lose yourself. Because some people, they add so much petrol, the fire consumes them too. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yep, yeah, we, we need two more stories. We need two more stories. Yep, yeah, just raise up your hands here. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, there's someone. There's a lady at the, yeah, the lady at the back here. Yeah. yeah, it will come to the front. Um, good morning. Good morning. Okay, so what I want to contribute, Don, is when you answered his question about it being a season and it being a pattern. I was in a relationship with someone and it was like, a, I was a trophy girlfriend. What does that mean, trophy girlfriend? Trophy. <laughs> what trophy. it means, trophy. Right. What it means is that he doesn't let you into his troubles. Like, you, he just treats you so perfectly that you don't even think that he's capable of having issues. I didn't know the person I was dating was suicidal. And it wasn't a one-time thing. It was an every-time thing. It got to a point, the first time I witnessed it, I was talking to his friends, and they were like, ah, uh-uh, that's what I used to do now. You didn't know. <laughs> and I'm like, so he lost his job, and he didn't even tell me because he just wanted me to feel like everything was good. And so when I found out, I was trying to reach out to him, and he was already sending me sniper, razor blade, knife. He was telling me to pick the one that he would use. <laughs> and it was a shock to me. I was in law school. Exams were closed. And it was just a lot. So when I was trying to reach out to his friends, I was like, leave him, leave him. He'll be okay. He does this thing a lot. And I'm like... So, when, so the thing is, the job... So he's an engineer and he works So what's your question, the contribution? My, just no, my contribution is, I walked away from that relationship. Okay. And sometimes I and, look And the back reason why you have I to walk away is this. When you date someone that is not emotionally stable, he will suffer, you will suffer. Yes. And guess what? You will suffer more. <laughs> yes, but I walked away at the time no, 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 when I, he I, lost I, his I'm job. I'm trying to close the conversation for the next person. That's why I'm, I'm trying to summarize for you. Let's appreciate that. There's someone raised up his hand here. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, I want someone that has that example. Actually, those of you that are married and there was a time in your finances, there was a time with something, there was a time, something like that. I want those kind of examples. Oh, there's a lady over there. Okay, let's take our story first. Let's take our story first. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's someone here. Okay, we have, just hold on this lady here. Yeah. Okay, I just want to talk about what you shared about, um, marriage so yeah. for me at the beginning when we wanted to get married things weren't so rosy like that and i remember the first day we went for inspection looking for an apartment and i was like ah, i can never live here <laughs> but after a while when i gave myself brain i was like ah if this guy go away i'm on my own no. <laughs> So, and I said, you know what, I'm ready to stay wherever you can afford. And that was how we started our journey. Where, where was that place? Tell, in describe Aja. that apartment. Yeah? <laughs> in Aja. Not, if, not even in... Uh, the way you... So, it was, was it a one-bedroom? No, it wasn't a one-bedroom, but the location as a... <laughs> Praise God. Like, we started like that too. I just wanted to share to encourage people because I remember when we had our first daughter, we had only one bed. We quickly did, um, like, furniture in December because 
Um, I was going to give birth in January, and you know the way if my own mother comes to that house and see us like that, I come and say, ah, if I suffer. <laughs> but you know, God has been faithful. But I just want to encourage, like, start from wherever you are. We started quite low, but we thank God for where we are now. Do you have beds now? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let me hear now. <laughs> we have even moved to any coin now. <laughs> <laughs> and we have three children now. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Look, look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. So, so, so the, the, the beautiful thing is season. I'm not saying be stupid, but season. Praise God. We have two more. There's a lady over here. You can have your seat. It's okay. Thank and there's you a lady over here, the final one. Yeah. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay, yeah. I married in 2015. And three years after my marriage, my husband had stroke. Wow. So... It was really, really, I really enjoyed those three years because he was a good man. But, you know, after that three years, he actually, though that day he told me he wanted to take me for a photo shoot for my birthday. So, that night, and he couldn't do anything anymore. So, he was paralyzed, you know, one side. And he lost his memory. This is somebody that does, you know, CAC, this um, CAC that registers people's um, company's name. And he lost it, everything up to now. So this is four years with still in well, though it's getting better but it's okay it's even in this auditorium. But I just want to say something that um, in that phase, that season was so ethic. In fact it affected my second child. We don't really have time for him then. We were just focusing on my husband. You know so I was just taking my time and thank God for how this. Did you, how did you manage it? Because we uh, need, we need was, to learn from you. <laughs> It was not easy. The truth of the matter is that it's not easy. Let me just stand up. My husband is here, but I, I did not ask him for this permission before I said, it. okay, I stood off. That's him. <laughs> oh, yes, look at that. Look at that. Can, can we appreciate, please, can, can you come? Thank you. Woman, can, you, can I give you a hug? Is that okay? Yeah, thank you. Oh, my goodness. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. So it has not been easy, but um, I almost opt out. But because there's something I used to tell people that um, when I was growing up, you know, every year of my life was in church. So that kept me, you know, moving and everything. So I joined this church through the, one of the elders in this church. So I just started coming. I think we joined, we joined the husband? June. Show him again, show him again, show him again. <laughs> We, jo we joined in June. Oh, hold on. Are you not blessed to have this kind of wife? You are. You are blessed. Oh, wow. Praise so, God. We just thank God that the face is big. You know, somebody, when you have, when your husband is someone that, you know, does everything, hajai, you know, and somebody that cannot even do anything again, that you have to wear in pampas, do all those things, and for four years, I just stand up this minute to say this, so that. He has, he's okay now because even when he, we came here for these four months, I've seen a lot of changes and, you know, he has gotten himself back. You know, this self-esteem that he cannot even face the crowd, the fact that he cannot, he wants to just be on his own. He affected my children because sometimes he chased us out. You know, he doesn't want to sit, he just wants to, you know, that stroke, when it's stroke, you know, for people that have, they understand what stroke means. It's not really easy, but thank so, God. So, let thank me tell you something. So this is my one question. I just want one word answer. What was the most important? What, was it, what did you have to cultivate? What did you have to do? Is it patience? It was just patience. And what I cultivated was patience. At the same time, my husband was a good person. Too, because I used to tell people that, that three years, if this guy has not been good, I will have gone. The three years was awesome. He was taking me, he was carrying me like a baby. I, he was taking care of me. So... I don't mind taking care of him from the every any day for him to be okay. Just for him to be okay. That's just it. So. And, 
and some people say some women are not awesome oh no they are celebrating a hero that's an hero let's celebrate let's celebrate praise God I really want to take your story but I'm going to ask for it in the fourth service I'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry I'm, I'm, I'm really please just forgive me is that your husband Oh, no, not, not at all. Oh, my God. Let's appreciate our work. She's a hero. You know, everything I could have preached, she has said it. Because she had the option. Guess what our option was? Leave it and go. <laughs> our, our option was not fire or extinguisher. Our option was abandon and go. And let me tell you, if she, if she explained to someone, oh, it was true, he had stroke, I just had to go. A lot of people understand. And she said, I'm just going to stay. And the reason I'm saying so is that because she understood seasons don't last forever. And you can see the man over there, how he says, I'm blessed. See, let me tell you something. Ephesians 6.13, look at it again. I want to look at it again. And I'm going to tell you the four things you have to do in every season. See, it says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. When the evil day comes, what will make you stand so how do you deal with seasons no matter the season the first thing is this you have to take it off spiritually I'm sure she will tell you she was praying is that not true she, she, you were fasting right she was praying she was fasting you have to take it off spiritually This season in your relationship, take it up. That's why this first, second, and third, all of you that feel as if you have a marriage to challenge, you have delay, you have business, we take it off spiritually. You have friends that feel that way, we take it off spiritually. You take it off spiritually. Why? It says, up to that, the kingdom of God suffer violence. And the violence, take it by force. The second thing you have to do when you go through a season is this. Very powerful. Stand. Go back to that verse. He says, see what it says. It says, that ye may be able to withstand in the day, evil day. And having done all, what do you do? What does stand mean? Remain positive. Remind yourself from time to time, this will come and pass. Raining season does not stay for a long time. It comes and pass. Winter doesn't stay for a long time. It will come and pass. Don't ever buy into that feeling that that season is forever. Because that will overwhelm you. That will depress you. That will make you weak. See what it says. See, haven't done all. Some of you, you've done everything. The next thing is what? Stand. And the next thing, the, 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 <laughs> this is so far for, you know, determine the result you want to see. So what do, you, what do I want? The reason why I said, when you determine the results you want, you now ask yourself, am I putting the fire <laughs> extinguisher or I'm putting what? petrol so the guy says I'm sorry I can't give you the house allowance and it's a financial I'm not saying a stingy guy it's a financial season I don't know that murmuring he's adding petrol so far someone told me one time I said your, your husband said you guys are not having sex he said what's the of having sex she was looking for a child. All the money would do, 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 do. I said, you come child. He said, Pastor, I'm a child or someone just moving me up and down on the bed, Jerry. I'm somebody's child. And you ask yourself, are you adding petrol to the fire? Some of you are dating. And maybe she did something. Are you adding petrol? And it's one thing, you want her, I will soon leave you. Are you adding petrol to 
the fire. Praise the Lord. Then the last thing is get support. See, you know why he's going to get support? And I love what she said. He said, one of the elders in church, let me tell you something. People outside the harvesters are helped by harvesters and NLP globally. Why would you be here and you don't get all the support? We have pastors that are trained. We have small group leaders. We have cells you can get to. We have female pastors, male pastors that can pray over you. But you used to choose to deal with your thing yourself. Get support. What is support? There may be time that you think you are kind and segusha. But meanwhile, you're carrying petrol. And someone will say, calm down. It's petrol that you're carrying. Get support. There may be time you want to carry a segusha. But you are so weak because it's been a long time. And you will need somebody else. Come, Calibi. Come and help me. Because it's so heavy. And I need somebody else. Let me carry from the bottom. From the bottom. I need somebody else to help me carry it. Get support. Glory to God. So the question is this. This is what you have to work on. What season are you in your relationship or marriage? And if you had one relationship that went bad, what season were you in and what did you learn? And say, what is the fire? And what should we be doing to fix it? The fire. What should I do not to aggravate the fire? What should I do to what? Kill the fire. Did this bless somebody today? Let's stand on our feet and pray.